Hi folks, welcome to another episode of ERB Explained, where I go in depth into the epic rap battles of history and go through it and break down what the meaning of the raps are. Now we, for today, are going back in time. We are going back to season one of Epic Rap Battles of History, and we're looking at Stephen Hawking versus Albert Einstein, one of my personal favorites. Now, as this, as you may be able to tell through the title, I am trained, at least, as a physicist. It's not what I do on my day-to-day -day job, but I do have a physics degree. So this has got, like, a special place in my heart right here. And so, uh, now this doesn't have as many references and such as the later ERBs do, because season one, they were still mostly just about generic insults to people and such, but it does have some really in-depth ones, and so we're going to go into it and break it down. And if you like this uh, series here, don't forget to like, subscribe, and to go and leave a comment below and let me know what battle do you want to see next. Uh, this is the last one I really had planned out, so I'm going to go off whatever the best suggestion is in the comments below. All right, without further ado, Albert Einstein versus Stephen Hawking. Let's go. Hold on a second. Let me close this out. So obviously, like I said, this was ERB back in the day, and you could tell by the uh, Einstein getup that their makeup and such wasn't a hundred percent up to par. But hey, we're gonna let it slide. This is still an awesome, awesome battle. So. <laughs> so. When I apply my battle theory, minds are relatively blown. So obviously a reference to both the special and general theories of relativity, which Einstein came up with. The next line is just a generic thing about the fact that Stephen Hawking's in a wheelchair. For those of you who don't know, he was um, diagnosed with ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease at a, in his mid-20s. And they says, we don't expect you to live more than two or three years. And I think he lived like close to 40. So, you know, anyways. Like I said, there's not a whole bunch of really in-depth battle raps, and this one is just one of my favorites, so we're going through it. What's with your voice? I can't freaking tell. You sound like Barney. Having sex with the speaking spell. <laughs> so, this is a, it's a funny line. I mean, it's wrong. Don't get me wrong. It's absolutely morally horrendous, but it's still pretty funny. And uh, what it is, is that, so Hawking, after a while, lost the use of his voice. And so the reason they sound like that is that he had a computer set up that basically uh, he had a couple of different ways that he could do it as he lost more and more motor control. He had to come up with new ways. But basically it came down to uh, him looking at a uh, letter if it was something complex and he could spell it out and then it would say it. Or he would look at whole words and it would piece together sentences and then say it. But either way, it was a long process that obviously he grew more adept at as time went on. But... You know, so that's how Hawking always spoke. So. I'll school you anywhere, MIT to Oxford. All your fans will be like, um, that was Hawkford. I'm as dope as two rappers. You better be scared, because that means Albert E equals MC squared. <laughs> uh, so I love the Albert E equals MC squared. Although, if you really want to get down to it, that's not quite. That's still not quite right, just because of the fact that two rappers would be two MC, not MC squared. I know it's a whole, it's it's just a thing. It's 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 the nerd in me coming out. Um, the it's it's interesting that he goes and mentions uh, Oxford because hey, this is an after the video part. I went and I did some research afterwards. And I realized that in this part I actually said something that was wrong. I had said that um, Hawking taught at Oxford, but I quickly went and did some research. Hawking taught at Cambridge and. Einstein was at Oxford for a little while. So I'm just going to go and edit out all the wrong stuff and just leave this in there and move on. <laughs> okay, I just got to stop because I love the fact that they decided that since they couldn't do the whole... Uh, you can't rap with the computerized voice that Hawking used, so they auto-tuned him so he sounds like T-Pain. It's, it's one of those little things that's just like... It's, it's hilarious at... And, and practical though, so. So, 
So that's a great reference right there. So for those of you who don't know, if you go into a gravity well, according to Einstein's uh, theory of relativity, you actually end up going into an area where relative to the rest of the universe, or no, it's not in that same inertial reference frame as you, your time moves much, much, much slower. So that if you go, I mean, if you see interstellar, it kind of explains that, that if you go close to a black hole or whatever, you know, your time slows down so that you can be there for, depending on how close you are, you can be there for what seems like a week to you and you come out as 10,000 years later or whatever. So. When you try to put your little pea brain against this kind of mind, on the best, on the stupid dog science, I'll be dropping mad apples on your head from the shoulder. Okay, so he says you got to put that little pea brain of yours. And he is, notice the way they spelled pea brain, because pea brain is actually a part of brain theorem, which says that the universe isn't the way we think of it. It's actually made up of multiple dimensions that are thin membranes resting on each other. And it's the interaction of those membranes that lead to the various forces that we see. And then the reference, uh, the dropping apples on your head is like Isaac Newton. And we, I only see so far for, for I stand on the shoulders of giants. I can't remember off the top of my head who said that, but it is a very famous physics quote. So it might have been Newton. I don't think it was Newton, though. I don't remember who said it. Someone said it. I'll look it up later. I'm just a giant whose shoulders you'd have stood on. If you could stand, I'll give you a brief history of pain with the back of my hand. You can't destroy matter or me for serious. Ripping holes in you bigger than the hole in your black hole theory was. Oh man, that is such a, so this whole line, this is the main reason I'm doing this, is this two sets of lines right here. So let's go back a bit. Obviously this is, so, uh, I'm going to pause it in a second. Okay, so Brief History of Pain with the Back of My Hand is a reference to Brief History of Time, Stephen Hawking's first book that made him what is, for all intents and purposes, a household name. Uh, it's very dense. It's hard to understand. Uh, it's the, But it's the book that got me on my path to physics. That's the book that I read. I was like, you know what? I want to be a physicist because I want to understand what's going on in the universe. But this next set of lines, this next set of lines. You can't destroy matter or me for serious. Ripping holes in you bigger than the hole in your black hole theory was. This is such a great lie. You don't get it. Ah, or you might get it. If you're really into deeply into physics, you might get it. But I'm going to explain it so that even if you aren't, you're going to get it. So he said you can't destroy matter or me. That is the second law of thermodynamics. Neither matter, matter slash energy, because they're the same thing in physics. Matter and energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be transformed. So you can change matter into energy. You can change energy back into matter. And though that's a much harder process because of the whole entropy thing. But anyways, you, but uh, a ripping holes in you bigger than the hole in your black hole theory was. That's so brilliant because the hole in Hawking's black hole theory was that it forgot for all intents and purposes about the second law of thermodynamics. It forgot about conservation of energy and mass and it, the fact that the way that he wrote his theory out, which is that all information that fell into a black hole was destroyed except for its mass and its spin. All of that uh, is, it's, it's, it violates the second law of thermodynamics. And this, and it went on for a long time before someone sat there and looked at it. And it's like, wait a minute, you can't do that. And, Oh, it's just, it's such a brilliant line because it references the second law and then it makes the point that the second law was the hole in Hawking's black hole theory. Just bloody brilliant. I am totally biased, but I'm going to tell you right now, that line won it from Einstein for me. That one line right there just totally blew it out of the water. There are 10 million, 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 million particles in the universe that we can observe. Your mama took the ugly ones and put them I, you know, I see a lot of people and they say, oh, that's such a, that's such a great line. It's so bad and everything. I don't, I don't feel it. I don't feel that one. I can see why they think that because it's got the big number in there. The sister and tells you how many particles in the universe. And then it goes down that he's the ugliest thing in the universe. But I just, I, I still don't feel that that is such a great line right there. It's just, eh. It's just a generic insult, which I, I prefer creativity.
<laughs> so that's two things right there. So the mushroom cloud you're making is in reference to the fact that Einstein's theory of relativity was the basis of the atom bomb. The cake wrapped from scratch like Carl Sagan. If you notice, he looks a little eh. Carl Sagan was a very famous stoner. For those of you who don't know, he wasn't just an author and a physicist. He was very famous for his uh, use of marijuana. And so he probably did bake some special brownies at some point or another. And while it's true that my work is based on you, I'm a supercomputer, you're like a T-I-82. Uh, all right, so that line right there, I'm like a supercomputer. You're, uh, and first of all, yes, all of his, um, all of, well, most of Hawking's work was based on Einstein. Uh, I guess it was pretty much all of it. Pretty much all of it was based on Einstein. But the supercomputer versus the TI-82, and that's kind of true also because the fact that Einstein, um, I mean, don't, first of all, the whole thing about Einstein not being good at math and he failed math and blah, 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 not true. That is totally not true. Einstein was always brilliant in math. He was a prodigy. But when it came time to develop his theories of relativity, he did have to have help from a mathematician because the, the mathematics was too far above his head. Whereas Stephen Hawking, he's stuck in a wheelchair. Everything he does mathematics wise is in his head. So that's probably, that's actually pretty true. I still think Einstein won it for the line about uh, Hawking's uh, black hole theory, but I'm biased, like I said. So you guys, comment below. Let me know who do you think won, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and let me know who do you think I should do next for ERB Explained. All right, thanks for watching. Have a good rest of the day.